Okay. So welcome. Uh, this is a talk about Linakia, a system uh, developed to make building Debian derivatives easier. So uh, first, starting with what, uh, what Debian derivative I'm actually building, um, the first thing that, the first actual derivative I made was Tanglu, which uh, was created in 2013 to embrace technologies and also processes that weren't possible in Debian at that time. Uh, it uses systemd, which is a, uh, right now it's not, it's a really boring fact, but back then in 2013 when uh, we had this large systemd flame war, this was actually uh, something remarkable. And uh, we thought we would just build a system based around systemd in order to uh, show how it works and give us a data point, an example for Debian on, um, on yeah, how, to, how it can work in a Debian-based system. Because back then, many people were asking for examples and weren't sure how, uh, whether this is the right path to forge. So yeah, we, uh, we did that. We also had uh, aimed for timed releases, which is difficult with a, strong, uh, with a small team, uh, as it later turned out. And we wanted to focus on workstations and desktops mainly. Uh, also, uh, one idea was to be as close to upstream and Debian as possible, which also meant that we tr basically tried to replicate Debian's infrastructure inside Tanglu itself, which did lead to some problems. Um, where's the next slide? Uh, oh well. Um, sorry. <laughs> Um, I don't know why the, uh, why the slideshow is slow at this point. Uh, okay, I will just talk about the next slide until it appears. There it is. Um, what you need for uh, building a derivative is mainly repository management, which is the Debian archive kit in this case for Tanglu. We need build infrastructure to make packages. We uh, originally thought that we wouldn't need to do transition tracking, but if you base on uh, Debian testing, you actually require that in order to, um, to do uploads in the right order, in order to rebuild things in the right order, because if you sync, just sync them in batch, you will rebuild them in any and arbitrary orders. And actually, testing turned out to be not as, um, as like, uh, easily buildable than we originally thought. Uh, this is also the reason why we need Britney to do package migration, and we also need to synchronize packages with Debian, which also means that, uh, which not only means that we need to fetch stuff from Debian and get it into our distribution, but we also need to merge patches we applied downstream. Uh, we also need to build ISO images, track bugs, have a wiki, uh, generate upstream metadata so stuff shows up in GNOME software and other tools, and also we need a lot of uh, miscellaneous tools to, um, to well, do various other smaller tasks. Um, so a short excursion into building things. Uh, we are a distribution which rebuilds all packages that Debian has, and it uh, bases upon testing. So uh, we had the task of building 80, uh, 28,000 source packages on two architectures, which is quite a lot of stuff. So we originally thought uh, that we should use Wannabuild because that's what Debian uses. And um, yeah, this turned out to be a really hard task because Wannabuild was uh, developed uh, in the origins of Debian and it's uh, almost impossible to set up for any derivative, which basically brings us to the first and only cat picture in this talk. Um, yeah, uh, I would just quickly go through this. If you have questions on why Wannabuild is difficult, uh, ask me later about it. The next thing we thought about using open build servers. Uh, back then, this wasn't possible, especially not uh, if we also want to use the Debian Archive Kit, because of the open build servers by OpenSUSE wants to take over also repository management, which was. Uh, which we explicitly didn't want. Meanwhile, uh, Collabora uh, did put a lot of work into making it work for Debian and for derivatives, which is awesome. But uh, back then, this unfortunately wasn't an option. So we went with Jenkins and uh, created 28,000 jobs uh, with a matrix in it, which led to a, uh, I don't know, I think it was about a gigabyte XML configuration file for Jenkins, which was actually pretty terrible. Uh, it worked for a small while, but even just rebooting Jenkins took about 40 minutes. So um, while Jenkins is great for CI, it's not great for building uh, a massive amount of packages. And yeah. Um, <laughs> so in the end, uh, we uh, went with Debal, which is uh, a system written by Paul Tagliamonte and made some custom glue for Tanglu in order to build a lot of these packages. Um, but this also had its own problems, uh, so actually package management is something we weren't really happy with uh, initially. We also had other problems with, um, 
with uh, actually replicating Debian infrastructure, which uh, is, for example, that uh, there are tons of cron jobs which are run on a time base, uh, on well, actually, obviously, which are run time based, which means that as soon as we upload a package, we generate the uh, packages files and then something else which might actually immediately run afterwards because this package file is just be rendered and generated. Um, just runs later, and this causes huge delays, for example, to get uh, one package into the, into the distribution. A lot of steps need to happen, and yeah, this is, uh, this is not ideal if you want to do fast development. Uh, of course, you can, can tune the cron jobs to run in the right order to make it less annoying, but uh, this is some work, and it's a bit, uh, yeah, it actually doesn't really solve the problem. It just makes it, uh, just mitigates it slightly. Um, also, it's, uh, if, you don't, uh, if you aren't part of a Debian infrastructure team, it's unclear how these tools work together. For example, I didn't know that a Britney throws out a text file, which is then directly imported into the DAC database, where DAC just overrides tables and testing with contents from this text file. And I asked uh, the FTP masters, and nobody knew how they actually how stuff actually migrates from testing. So it took a while to figure this out, and it's actually it's actually a well-known thing now. But uh, yeah, if you're new, it's not really something something you know. So in general, it's really hard to set something up that resembles DAC, uh, the infrastructure Debian uses. Um, Fortunately, DAC uh, and especially Brittany got a lot better. Brittany is now really easy to use, and DAC is also uh, also in the process of being easier to use for for Debian derivatives. For example, while writing Tanglu, we got rid of a lot of hard coding of um, the unstable name and uh, and uh, Devinisms in it. So uh, yeah, this is this is pretty great by now. Um, there are also maintenance issues because. Um, as much as teams complain inside Debian that they don't have enough manpower, they actually have a lot more manpower compared to a derivative that's just started and has about four members. So um, they have a lot of teams which maintain separate parts of the infrastructure. So a Reese team which is dedicated to, um, to maintaining Britney and doing transition tracking, and the FTP masters who only deal with DAC, so they are experts in their field, while you, as if you start a derivative, need to basically know everything and also maintain everything, which is, uh, which is difficult especially since every tool is configured in its own way, and since Tangle was doing, um, doing a lot of, lot of releases, uh, we had to like, basically overwrite things, um, basically adjust every configuration file every single time, which is annoying. So since I'm running out of time, I just go through a few solutions we tried to mitigate this, which is FedMessage, which is a system to make uh, parts communicate with each other. This is developed by Fedora, but it didn't solve the problem completely because we still had uh, the configuration management problem. We also had Rapidumo, which is um, a, uh, a large collection of Python scripts we developed in order to glue the different parts of the infrastructure together, which is, was kind of, well, it worked, but it wasn't great. So we had something working in the end based on these things, and also a Git repository with all the configuration files, but it wasn't awesome. Then uh, PureS happened, where Purism approached me to uh, help with developing their PureS, and I thought, uh, do we really want to use this for, for this new thing? And meanwhile, I was already working on some uh, integrated solution to resolve the uh, problems we were facing, which, yeah, are listed here again. Um, and yeah, surprisingly, also, the tools for Tanglu didn't actually work for PureS because we thought we would have made them generic enough to be used by other derivatives, but in, in fact, this was not the case. So uh, I developed Lanakea, which is, um, has a massive scope, hence the name of the Lanakea supercluster. Um, which is a, uh, basically the home of our galaxy. It's a galaxy cluster, and yeah, you, I could, could go on and explain the name, but I will skip that now. So uh, the basic fundamentals of this, that we have one source for all configuration, which is a central database. We have a tightly integrated components which only talk to the database. Uh, we want to minimize human intervention, so as soon as something can be done by a module inside Lanakea, uh, we don't want any human to like, upload a package for rebuilding, but uh, for example, we want to upload the package have Lenakea like, auto detect what needs to be rebuilt and have it done uh, without like having to intervene. Uh, we also want a web interface because that's actually how things are managed by now and not having users to log in into, into um, or SSHing into machines. Um, and it's also nice for permission control so we can have users um, give individual permissions to, to users to 
perform certain tasks, which was a problem uh, for Tangle because they always had to go through me or someone else who had permission if they wanted something migrated or something done. And as soon as you had permission, you were basically able to do a lot of things which we didn't want to uh, want to give um, to newcomers to the distribution already. We also want to support uh, Flatpak and OS3 natively, and also maybe Snappy, um, which is uh, yeah, emerging technology and playing around with that for a while. So yeah, and also share work with other distributions. Um, yeah, shell scripts are terrible, so this shouldn't be shouldn't happen because it's basically a sign that uh, that we did something wrong. This is the basic architecture of the thing. I would quickly go through it. Uh, some things aren't ready yet. I will talk about. Uh, I will mention that when I talk about them. So what we have in Linakia is adapters to existing uh, projects, which is, for example, for the Britney package migration, the Spears module, and for a Germinator, which is generating meta packages, and for checking the installability of packages, which is those. We have these things, which basically uh, set up these tools, so you don't need to care about that when you make a new derivative. They write the configuration for them based on information they found in the center database. Uh, they read data that's generated by these tools into the database so it is available for other tools immediately, and they receive triggers via zero MQ uh, communication um, in order to run. So we also have modules which are um, yeah, doing tasks like synchronizing packages, uh, building ISO images, managing the build queues in order to build things, and they share, in general, share a lot of code uh, to, um, yeah, well, to execute actions faster. Um, the build stuff isn't quite there yet. Uh, it's currently a work in progress. Uh, for long-running tasks, we also have a job runner, which is uh, a pool of stuff, a pool of, of uh, machines that can perform arbitrary tasks, ranging from uh, from building images for the distribution, or building packages, importing uh, Git repositories, and and doing all kinds of things. Um, they use encrypted connections uh, because, as at least in Tangle, we don't have um, we don't have a like a central build farm where uh, only trusted communication is happening, but uh, Django packages are built sometimes on servers someone has in their basement, so yeah. We also have user interfaces, um, which contain CLI tools to administer the services right now, so we still have to SSH into a machine in order to, to get things done. Um, but there are also web frontends in development. Some of them are already working uh, in order to view QA information in a central location instead of going through many places in order to view what's happening in the distribution. Um, there's also an IRC, bug in uh, IRC bot in development in order to announce certain changes that are interesting, like a new image was built, please test it in the IRC channel. Um, most of the user interfaces, though, are very early work because I'm actually not a web developer, so uh, this is a kind of new territory for me. Um, yeah, um, in general, these things are really easy to uh, to set up and are self-assembling because they communicate uh, via the database or via zero MQ to in order to pass messages amongst each other. So um, as soon as you have one and connect it to uh, to the central instance, it will immediately detect the other modules and uh, and work with them. Um, technology use is basically as boring, I guess, uh, except for the fact that we use a deep programming language for um, for most things and Python for the rest, uh, and also Mongo at the moment. But I'm pretty sure that this will change at least in terms of using the database. Um, yeah, quickly for future plans. Um, first things, as first priority is to make package build work uh, properly. Uh, and integrate the transition tracking module and basically write a lot more modules uh, to uh, do perform more tasks in Sandline Ikea. Also, one, one uh, pretty important point is to use OpenQA, which is a service by, developed by OpenSUSE in order to do testing on the final image and uh, to test, uh, to automatically check whether the image we ship to our users is working and installation is working and things like that. And yeah, packaging Linakea for Debian is something I'm working on. It's um, except for the few JavaScript things, it's relatively simple. Uh, and as soon as it's as it has more documentation, it's actually easy to set up for other derivatives. Uh, you can just install it from Debian and use it. Um, at the moment, if you are developing a derivative and have existing infrastructure, I wouldn't recommend using Linakea just yet, but wait a bit because it's still a very early development and uh, there are a lot of things that will change and a lot of modules still in development. So, um, yeah. Do you have questions? Two 
one of the problems that I've run into, like dealing with like many derivatives and stuff like that, is have you what is the best tool for um, things like a replacement for packages.debian.org, like a web interface that actually lets users take a look at what's in your repositories? Um, at the moment, we are uh, in Tanglo using packages.debian.org, so the packages web uh, application for this. But Lanyakia has, uh, because we have this information already and we can make use of it, it has this uh, web SW view thing, uh, which is um, not only showing packages, but will also in, in some future be able to show flat packs alongside. So this is the thing I would uh, replace it with long term. Short term, I think packages web is the thing to go to. Oh, sorry. Just to take the packages.debian.org sources and actually go set up your own instance? Um, yeah, it's okay. It's open source, so you oh, no, can I, use I'm it. sure it's open source. I just I hadn't looked at how easy like how easy it was to do. Um, it's a bit tricky um, because you need to regenerate the the database for it internally, and it also runs with Apache. So if your system is around about engines, uh, yeah, you need to well work around that or write something to run the Perl script without Apache. So, um, but it's possible. It's actually one of the nicer things to set up. Um, yeah. Is the intention so, to run it only for derivative distributions, or can you run it as a, for a partial distribution as well, where you have, you know, you use stretch and then you have um, your own repository with 100 packages that you need to build and sync and, and continue working and back forth maybe? Um, right now, most modules assume that the repository is complete. So if you, you could mirror it, uh, which is what we do uh, in PureS right now. We just mirror all binary package and don't rebuild them. So um, that would work. Um, but um, actually, the modules that actually um, assume that the distribution is complete, which is the depth check thing, you could just not use them or fix them in order to, uh, to work for a partial distribution. So uh, right now, I'm, I'm not focusing on partial distributions because I have no partial distribution to work with. But it's definitely possible to, to use it. Yeah. Also, question to use most modules. So uh, the depth check module will run into problems, I think. I have a question myself because we are here in the, the blend track and uh, mm -hmm. blends are actually not uh, creating derivatives. How often do you think will your tool used and for what purpose? Um, when I created Tangle, I thought I would only do this once and actually nobody would ever create Debian derivatives. And I actually meanwhile learned that a lot of people do create Debian derivatives, mostly internally, so uh, they can be used like company in, inside the company. Uh, but also pure S happened, so I think uh, creating Debian derivatives is a quite common task. Meanwhile, there was also recently a talk by uh, the Endless uh, people who made um, a derivative dedicated for um, well people who have less stable internet connections and uh, yeah, basically in the third world. So I think for these specialized um, specialized niches, uh, creating Debian derivatives is quite common because you can ship one ISO image for users to just install instead of telling them install Debian and then perform these additional steps in order to uh, get the thing working. Yeah, I always think that tweaking Debian in itself is more sustainable because these people are creating the derivatives in all uh, places of the world and mm -hmm. uh, reinventing the wheel as Michael <laughs> just told us before. Yeah, to make the case for derivatives uh, in case of Tanglu, uh, just saying let's go for system D wasn't possible, and also saying let's go for timed releases isn't possible. So there are some things which Debian can't do, and Debian shouldn't do even, I would say. And these are the niches that can be filled by derivatives. Oh yeah, for example, Pure S is 100% free software and is uh, trying to get endorsed by the Free Software Foundation, which is something uh, Debian, which has the non-free branch, also cannot do. So those are cases, for example. So you mentioned OBS, and the Endless guys were using OBS. Mm -hmm. um, 
talking about OBS. So <clears throat> for a new project starting today, how would you contrast what you're doing with what OBS is capable of doing today? Um, that's a good question. So um, I haven't used OBS, so I can't really uh, comment on this because I used OBS about three years ago, the last time. And back then it wasn't really, really nice to work with. And, uh, but meanwhile, a Collabora did, uh, did a ton of work and it's even packaged in Debian meanwhile. So uh, I would need to see how, how well it works. So I think if your objective is to just build things and have some basic repository management, then uh, using OBS is a good idea. If you want more, like uh, the whole transition tracking and automatic rebuilds, then uh, using this is a better idea. Um, I think uh, one of the ideas is to maybe get rid of Duck and to absorb the repository management inside Lanyakea, which is something I'm, I think might need to happen at some point because Duck is a real bottleneck at the moment. Um, but uh, prior to that, I would also see if I can somehow interface Lanyakea with the open build service instead, which would, uh, would have some, some synergies in that area. Or just make it pluggable so you can use Duck and uh, open build service and anything else you want. So yeah, this is just a fabric where you can put in other services and have them share code and information. That's the basic idea behind it. Mm -hmm. So okay, thanks for the talk and yeah. Uh, Thank you.